I think uh, Senator Marcos, will you allow a brief statement from them, or would you like to take your time now for interpolation? I, 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 uh, I would uh, allow the uh, secretary perhaps after the questioning because this is uh, just continuing my former line of questioning when I ran out of time uh, yesterday. So go ahead, Senator. Uh, thank, will, you, course, thank you, thank you, Senator Marcos, and, and my to... my intervention will be very short. Uh, I just want to refer. To, I, I'm uh, sorry, Secretary Dallas. Let let me just make this clear. Would you allow her to... Well, no, I would rather finish mine because uh, baka abutan tayo ng 2.30 na hindi pa natapos yung aking uh, tatanong. Uh, so, with the... Uh, but afterwards, I think we will... <laughs> if, if I get luck. Uh, we, uh, so, let me continue with the line of questioning that I had started yesterday. Uh, General Napenas, during the January 9 meeting with uh, General Purisima, Men with Mendez Purisima and the President, hinanap ba ang, ng Pangulo si General Espina? No, Your Honor. Hindi niya sinabi, nasan si DDG? No, Your Honor. No. General Purisima, did the President look for... General, uh, General Purisima, did the President look for General Espina in your January 9 meeting in the palace? No, Your Honor. No, so he, he was not surprised and he was... Uh, uh, he, was, he, it was uh, uh, he was not surprised that he was not there and he went on with the meeting despite the fact that the acting Chief PNP was not there. Uh, we have uh, heard the testimony today uh, from the different officers. General Katapang, at no point did you inform the President that there was a, uh, a firefight going on where uh, we, were, we were suffering uh, casualties, uh, that PMP staff was suffering casualties? No, Your Honor, but in the afternoon it became very clear that indeed we had suffered uh, How very How did it become casualties. clear, General? Oh, uh, when the uh, General Guerrero already informed that there were already casualties in the field. So it was General Guerrero who he, who informed the president. Uh, when he was uh, talked to. Yes, but that so it was the first person to inform the president that there were there was a firefight, there was an encounter, and we are beginning to suffer heavy casualties. The first time was told was uh, was uh, General Guerrero informing the president. Is that correct? Uh, we are not uh, we are not yet confirmed on how many casualties we have. I know, but uh, the, the the point I'm trying to uh, the uh, the question I'd like answered is who was the first person to inform the president that there is a firefight in Mas Mamasapano and it has gone wrong. Uh, there's an operation. It has gone wrong, and we are beginning to suffer heavy casualties. Who? informed the president of that first uh, your honor i do not know may i ask okay. my field commanders if they can be allowed to well answer? no the field commanders were only reporting to you and you were next to the president so i presume you would be the closest one uh, from the from the uh, side of the pnp uh, i know that it's secretary mark would not have been the one because he was he did not know of the operation general spina uh, did you at any point uh, transmit this uh, information to the president no, sir. So what we are, what I'm trying to find out, General Purisima, did you at any point, uh, when you heard that uh, because at 5:30 you were already 5:30 a.m. you were already requesting uh, uh, assistance from the AFP, did you at that point also inform the president I am, uh, I am requesting assistance from the AFP because yung mga tropa ko ay napasabak at uh, mukang uh, uh, marami na tayong casualties. Your Honor, that is the essence of my request earlier, that uh, to clear with the... Uh, the uh, so, uh, at, at this public hearing today, we are being told that we do not know or we cannot be told when the President was first informed about the firefight uh, the, between the MILF, BIFF, and the PNP staff. Your Honor, that's why I'm requesting because uh, it, it involves the communication uh, between me and the... Uh, the president your honor who had uh, who did when did the president know that marwan had been killed ano yung report sa inyo a general na penas bingo mike one ang uh, communication uh, it's mike one bingo sir okay there but mike one bingo when was that uh, information relayed to the president after you received that uh, that uh, information a uh, general na penas what did you do with it what did you do with that information? I informed the uh, OIC PNP through a text message, and I also informed General Purisima through a text message, Your Honor. Uh, 
did uh, General Espina, did you forward that information to anyone? To your to to General Purisima or to the President or to SILG? Sir, about marijuana, I'm not so sure. Uh, ang nakalagay kasi doon HBT, so it's just ordinary. Pero napapainkwento na ng 5.30, ang naging instinct ko, sir, tumawag kay General Guerrero, tulungan sila. Yung encounter na kikilangan nila ng tulong, alalay. Pero Marwan, I'm, stry I'm still trying to... Okay, para if you could get that information oh, for sir. us. Please. General Guerrero, did you inform the president at any point that the uh, the firefight there was a firefight and we were beginning to suffer heavy casualties madam chair your honor i was told to brief on the situation in central mindanao at around 1700 or 5 pm your honor so at that briefing the president was present Ye yes sir so the, your briefing was about the firefight of the pnp staff in mamasapano uh, against the BIFF and MILF? Yes, Your Honor, that, that is based on the information that I'm getting from my division commander. It's very uh, vague. It's that's not complete. Okay. Uh, We're just trying to update him on what we learned about the incident uh, from my division commander, Your Honor. Did the President issue any instructions having found out that there was a firefight going on? Uh, at that time, we were already discussing the uh, condition of or the state of the 84th SAC. What, was the, what were the instructions of the President to you upon finding out that we were beginning to suffer heavy casualties? We, he, we were discussing about uh, the possibility of reinforcing them, but it is already being done by the 6th Infantry Division. So he did not give you any instructions as to what to do? Uh, the guidance is to reinforce or rescue the group. So, my you know, guidance to my division commander is to do, do his best effort. Well, the, the guidance, what do you mean by guidance? This came from the president? This came from your superior commander? Who, what guidance uh, was that? We, we were in the briefing room, Your Honor. It, the presence of the president, the chief of staff, the what SND. What were the instructions to you or any of the officers uh, by the president upon him finding out that there was a firefight and we were suffering heavy casualties in that briefing. In that briefing, Your Honor, at about 1700, uh, I was discussing about the 84th SAC. So this is the main effort that we found out later on. So the guidance is ensure that there is no friendly fires because we are doing a link-up operations. So Meaning, the instructions to you were to ensure no friendly fire. There were no instructions as to the extrication exfiltration of our we are already doing that your honor okay all right so uh again so there were no instructions specific to uh, to you by the president after your briefing apparently not general pangilinan uh you said that uh, you were following doctrine which is well understood uh kaya nyo hindi uh, hindi kayo nagpaputok ng fire mission uh dahil nga hindi maliwanag ang uh, locations ng mga puwersa uh, had, however, there been a direct order from the President to conduct a fire mission in support of the PNP staff uh, who were pinned down, would you have uh, ordered that fire mission? Your Honor, uh, just the same, I will follow what is the doctrine. So you would not have followed the President's order to fire even if it was danger close? No, Your Honor, unless... unless... You would have defied an order, a direct order from the President? Because there is a doctrine that we need to follow. Unless the one that is requesting that it be fired, it be fired from his position, the one that is requesting is the one that is engaged, probably, probably, Your Honor. So if, the, Your Honor, may if, 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 if those under fire had requested uh, to fire upon my own position, you would have ordered that fire mission, but if the President ordered it, you would not have done it? Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> well, that is a bit of a... That, 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 that I, am, I am a little bit surprised because a direct order from the Commander-in-Chief, uh, you will defy a correct order, uh, a direct order from the Commander-in-Chief. But anyway, thank you very much. General Katapang, in your previous testimony, you said, ayaw kong magpalipad ng aking air asset dahil baka mamisinterpret ng MILF na sabihin nila atake na ito. Is that correct? Uh, yes, Your Honor. So it was more important to you to preserve the 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 the, 
peace process rather than save the lives of our uh, policemen. Your Honor, uh, dahil namili ka, eh, you prioritized. Eh. Yeah, you prioritized the peace process or the, 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 the ceasefire over the lives of our PNP sub officers. Your Honor, there was no request for a air support from the PNP sub. I, uh, the, I would like to go back to the record, and hindi na natin, but I will find the record where it's very, very clear that all support, that any support, I know, I know that General Napeño has called everybody he knew. But anyway, uh, this is, uh, now we have, a, we have a division commander telling us that he would defy a direct order from the president. And now we are hearing that uh, the chief of staff is prioritizing the peace process over the lives of uh, the PNP South. So I'm, 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 I'm very, very surprised because uh, we talk about doctrine here. That is not in military doctrine. Now I'd like to go now to uh, the, the problem not we have talked about command and control. I'd like to now talk about the coordination process. General uh, Orense, you are the GRP adjunct ad of, uh, you're the, P you, you're the, sorry, the GRP adjunct uh, on, in, 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 in position. Yes, sir. In the, in the report of the AFP, um, at 5.37 a.m. 25 January, the chairman of the GPH adjunct uh, tried to reach MILF Ajag and could not contact them. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so that is 5.37 a.m. 4 o'clock p.m. was the total ceasefire. Tama ba yung aking mga uh, oras? 4 in the afternoon, 4 sir. 4 p.m., yes. yes uh, 1600 uh, of 25 Ye January. Yes, Your Honor. Would you tell me what happened between 5.37 a.m. when you first tried to contact MILF Ajag until the total ceasefire at 1600 of 25 January. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, actually, sir, it's not 5.37. I called him up at about 5.48 uh, in the morning. But uh, unfortunately, uh, his phone could not be reached. So I made uh, another uh, uh, call about uh, 6.38, uh, Your Honor, and uh, the phone just kept on ringing. Then at about uh, 7.31, he was the one who called up. And uh, I, he informed me that uh, the, there was already uh, something that, is, that was actually unusually happening. Uh, I asked him about uh, the inability of not uh, uh, making contact with him. Sabi ko sa kanya, uh, Attorney Dataya, Attorney, uh, kanina pa ako tumatawag sa'yo, pero hindi kita makontakt. And uh, his uh, retort was, pasensya ka na sa isang 73-year-old nasakitin na matanda I need uh, rest sabi niya ganoon and that, uh, that is at what time uh, general Lorenzo? 731 na uh, your honor uh, uh, in the account of the AFP 730 major soul of GPH CCCH contacted the international monitoring team is that correct in fact tumawag pa sayo na meron sa account yes, niyo commander 6 ID called uh, chairman GPH uh, Ajag if he has contacted his counterpart ay eh, wala pa but at 7.30 a.m., Major Sol started to organize the, uh, uh, well, contacted the international monitoring team and started to organize the joint ceasefire crisis team. Is that correct? Yes, sir, Your Honor. Very well. So what happened at that point? So, hindi nyo na contact yung MILF adjunct at all? Uh, he was the one who called up at about uh, 7.31, Your Honor, and uh, from then on, we uh, kept communicating uh, with each other with regards to the, uh, with regards to the uh, event that was unfolding. So sir. at 7.31 a.m. Uh, of the 25th of January, MILF Ajag calls Chairman GPH Ajag, and he is informed he will call Darapanan. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, actually, sir, he said he would call the Darapanan to make uh, some uh, more coordination. If, if you will uh, remember, sir, the other day I presented, sir, the levels of uh, coordination starting from the operating units up to the uh, MILF adjunct, sir, and that was uh, the one that he did because he had to inform also the Central Committee and uh, what's, what's uh, happening. So what I'm saying here, uh, Your Honor, is that... Uh, the Central Committee 
I believe would have to take actions on what's happening. It's it's already beyond the ajag. What's happening, sir? It's already the CCCH at that time, Your Honor. Thank you. I understand. Uh, okay, so by 7:31 a.m., MILF ajag was already informed of the situation on the ground. That is that is what we have in the account. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right, but it took it took nine hours until the total ceasefire. Um, in fact, the other, the, uh, at 11.45, uh, the Joint Ceasefire Crisis Team had a dialogue with Guma, who is the 105th Base Commander. Is that correct? Uh, yes, Your Honor. And uh, it's, it's already uh, the take of the CCCH at that uh, okay. time, Your Honor. So, Chairman Iqbal, how is it that it took close to five hours upon your knowing that there was a missing counter, as you like to characterize it, until the, fight, the firing stopped. Bakit ganun katagal? And we I can only speculate how many people died between 11.45 when the JCCT, when the JCCT dialogue with Guma was, uh, occurred and uh, the total ceasefire at 4 o'clock p.m. Why did it take so long? Alam na ng commander ng 105th uh, na commander ng 105th na gobyerno ang kaharap nila. Bakit nagantay ng halos limang oras bago natigil ang putukan? Uh, Senator Marcos, this will be your last question is, for that, that time. That is my last question. Okay, I would you. just like to point out the inefficiencies and the uh, ineffectiveness of this coordinating dahil lagi natin nababalitaan, lagi natin naririnig na hindi nag-coordinate ang, ang, ang kapulisan. Nag-coordinate sila 5.37 pa lang, pero natigil ang pukutukan alas 4 ng hapon. Uh, Chairman Iqbal, please explain uh, how it took so long and why this mechanism, which it seems was followed, did not even, did not affect a ceasefire until close to 11 hours later, at which time, through which time, I do not, I can only imagine how many staff troopers had been killed. Well, I talked to the chairman of the MLF uh, Coordinating Committee on Cessation of Hostilities or Ceasefire, and I even talked to the head of the International Monitoring Team, and uh, their statement was that they attributed uh, the length of uh, the effectivity of uh, the ceasefire on the collapse of communication. But as to what really happened, why it uh, happened that way, I, I think the proper personalities to answer that your honor would be the associates of the MILA, associates of government, and the members of the international monitoring team. Because I understand that uh, since around uh, uh, 6 o'clock, 5.30 or 6 o'clock, they were already on the ground trying to uh, effect a ceasefire between the two, 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 two groups. Thank you, Madam Chairman. No more questions, but just this statement. We still have to find out, and it has to be explained to us, because it is constantly being said that this happened because of lack of coordination with the MILF. The coordination began with the MILF at 5.37 a.m. 25 January. The fighting stopped at 4 o'clock p.m. of 25 January. That is close, that is uh, 10 and a half, 11 hours. Now the coordination had already begun but it took 11 hours for the MILF to stop shooting at our forces. That, I, I think, put spade to the idea that the coordination was not there. The coordination was there, it was attempted, but it was not uh, uh, implemented until 11 hours later, by which time many of our troopers, by which time, by 4 o'clock, lahat ng namatay, patay na. So thank, that thank. is the extent of my uh, interpolation. Thank we you will, we will have that for the record. Thank you for setting that, Senator Marcos. Very briefly, one minute, sir. Yes, sir, uh, that's, uh, the coordination is very important so that uh, the, the firing should not start. Because once the firing starts, it's very hard to, to separate by experience. But Kuma already knew that the, his, his, the forces in front of him were, 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 were military well, there were government forces. She was the joint dialogue with uh, Buma was at 11:45 a.m. General, anyway, please have your statements uh, written if you have any clarifications to make. Thank you.
Um, Senator Recto, it is now your turn. Let me remind uh, the rest of the senators that we have a very important um, executive session after this one. So we will try to finish. Otherwise, we will have to come back again next week to, do, to finish the next round. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Chair, many of my questions have already been asked, so I will uh, only ask two or three possible questions. Uh, two for the MILF side. Uh, Ginong Iqbal, Meron pong BBL na nakahain dito po sa Kongreso at alam naman po ninyo ang Senado ay hindi malaking rubber stamp which will mechanically out a yes or a no sa kahit anong batas. Being a deliberative body, we offer our insights to cure, improve, amend some of the provisions with the end in view of forging a superior piece of legislation. Kung sakaling mababago ang BBL, substantive in scope but no major dilution of the principles and will not jeopardize autonomy, tatanggapin nyo ba ito? Igagalang nyo po ang pasya at wisdom ng lehislatura? Or will you use this as an excuse to turn your back and walk away from the negotiating table? Uh, thank you, Your Honor, for asking that question. Uh, I would repeat uh, what uh, we have been saying. Uh, that the MILF uh, uh, trust the collective wisdom of Congress, both the lower house and the upper house, to pass a good legislation in the form of uh, the Bang Samar Basic Law. And then uh, I would uh, reiterate what had been stated in the letter of uh, Chairman Murad uh, to Ropos, uh, Congressman Ropos Rodriguez in, uh, regarding the BBL. The, the letter said that the position of the MILF is what is contained in the BBL. However, knowing that uh, plenary powers rest with Congress, then the, the MILF is requesting the Congress to, to, to improve and uh, perhaps to hasten the BBL. Okay. So, maliwanag natatanggapan ninyo ang pasya ng Kongreso kung meron amin, mga amendment na gagawin ang mga kinatawan. Ang bottom line po, uh, so as far as we are concerned, uh, it's not to the extent of watering it down. Not to the extent okay. of watering it down. Because even if we accept it, Your Honor, mananatili pa rin ang problema. Kasi a watered-down BBL would not address the legitimate grievances of our people. Uh, and then, pagtatanggapin ng MLF, halimbawa, yung watered-down na BBL, pati ang MLF magiging in, ano, in, magiging uh, Ma, ma out of fashion ng MILF, ma, ma, magiging irrelevant ang MILF, and then magpapatuloy yung problema. Kaya ho ang appeal namin na sana po yung uh, BBL as it is uh, crafted by the Bank Samuro Transition Commission except for improvement and for enhancement for Congress really to, to pass a good legislation in the form of the Bank Samuro uh, Transition. Maraming salamat, Ginong Iqbal. Um, uh, naniniwala po tayo Na maraming, well, we all know that there are many contentious issues dito sa BBL, no? May mga issue dyan ng kapangyarihan at issue dyan pang pondo. The BBL is not just a political blueprint but also an appropriations bill. At uh, in the first year estimate, sa aming pagsisiyasat, sa aming pagsusuri sa mga dokumento, sa mga sagot, sa mga iba't ibang forum, ay siguro yung unang taon nang gagastusin dito ng taong bayan ng ating pamalaan na babayaran ng taxpayer ay hindi bababa sa 75 billion uh, ginong ikbal. No? Uh, tama ba yung nabanggit kong uh, halaga? Na hindi bababa uh, sa 75 billion? Siguro tama, more or less. More or less, opo. Now, just to put things into perspective, ginong ikbal, yung budget ng AFP ay 95 billion Ang budget ng PNP ay 70 billion. Ang budget ng CCT ay 70 billion. Ganong kalaking pera ang uh, manggagaling sa mga taxpayer outside of uh, the arm region. No? Ganong kalaking halaga to. 70 billion na automatically appropriated na wala nang say ang Kongreso. Sa unang taon pa lang, ha? may mga block grant, may formula meron social fund at kung ano-ano pa. No? Uh, hindi ba't kung ang isang grupo ay humihingi ng autonomy, bakit humihingi rin ng pondo? Ibig sabihin, ang ibig sabihin autonomy ay magsasarili. 
bakit kinakailangan ganito kalaking pondo ang ibibigay? Okay, answer it, Your Honor. Yes, please. Uh, Unang-una ho, kasi yung autonomy na sa para sa Bangsa Moro is still part of the Philippines. Still the, still the Philippines is the mother state. So, as a mother, it's natural that the mother should help the son or the daughter. Oh, now, now naman po natin yan. Ngunit, uh, posible ang iba't ibang lalawigan sa Bansang Pilipinas ay hihingi din ng parehong kapangyarihan o di kaya magtatambo, e eh bakit yung taxpayer money namin ay mapuputan ganun kalaki sa ibang lugar ng Pilipinas na parang uh, masyadong malaking kapangyarihan at pondo ang hinihingi. No? But I will, I will set that aside already and I'm sure that there will be uh, other hearings when we tackle the BBL by itself uh, na pwede natin pag-usapan to. Ang huling katanungan ko na lang sa ating government uh, side, no? Nung nakaraang hearing, tinanong ko, ano ba talaga ang U.S. involvement sa planning operation dito kay Marwan? No? At uh, nababasa natin sa payagan na meron reward money, meron mga chopper na ginamit, yung index finger nga, hindi nabigay sa PNP, napadala sa General Santos, ni hindi natin nakunan ng letrato, so on and so forth, pwede bang ipaliwanag ninyo dito sa Senado ngayon? Your Honor, uh, I, I believe that those two issues uh, will list it down that will be taken up in the executive session, Your Honor. So, sasagutin ninyo mamaya? That yes, Your Honor. Session. Okay. So, yun lang po, Madam Chair. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, Senator Recto. If everybody uh, followed your example and stuck to the time, I think we will make it with our, to our executive session. Uh, I will give uh, Secretary Delas one minute, please, for your manifestation. Uh, yes, Your Honor. And I, I can't just let it go because uh, so much was said about the re relationship between <clears throat> terrorism and revolutionary movements. And I think that the manifestation of Senator Cayetano, there is a, a part there that I, I wish to underline because precisely this is this will help in, to enlighten the discourse he said that in the that the us government had wanted to put milf in the in the in the terrorist list it was a philippine government that uh, asked that it not be included but very meaningfully it also said that the Philipp that the us government decided <laughs> eventually that the best way to delink terrorism and milf as a revolutionary movement was a peace process Alalahanin lang ho yun, natin ho yun. Yun ho yung sinabi na ang pinakamabisang paraan na ma-disconnect mo ang isang revolutionary movement at ang terorismo is the peace process. And in the end, that is the policy of the, of the U.S. government that has prevailed. Let me also just mention, Your Honors, uh, that um, uh, IRA was a terrorist, uh, was labeled as a terrorist movement. ANC of Mandela was also a terrorist movement. Part in, in Colombia where uh, there are negotiations now ongoing uh, that may lead to an agreement where they will become part of a government was also a terrorist movement. Uh, yun ho yung ating sinasabi na uh, um, ma kailangan ho titignan lagi ito in a, in a, in a narrative. Hindi ho, uh, ang evolution ho ng revolutionary movement ay hindi napapako sa isang, isang sandali. At may nangyayari. At ang anong ginagawa mo ngayon ay dapat na angkop doon sa kalagayan nito ngayon. And may I just ask your honor, just time also to um, to Professor Ferrer uh, to respond to the manifestation uh, that was with reference to her remarks. Um, let, let me just, uh, um, we will go ahead and we will ask for that manifestation later on. In the meantime, we will go to Senator well, Senator Aquino's, Senator Aquino. Yeah, um, Madam Chair, I'd like to listen to Professor Ferrer's manifestation so she can take it out of my one minute. If it can just be one minute, please. Thank you, Senator Aquino. Well, very briefly, uh, Your Honors, the matter of the coordination, I think one question have, that has arisen in these uh, circumstances is whether, in fact, a high-value target uh, operation requires this uh, uh, some kind of a prior coordination between uh, within between first at first level between the government involved in the LEO, LEO and our AJAG and then second secondly between the government AJAG and the MILF AJAG 
I think this, this has really been part of the problems that we have encountered in the past ever since that kind of a protocol was established in 2002. And that was why in 2012, uh, the, the implementing guidelines was developed further between the government and the, and the MLF, but we continue to have that kind of difficulty, particularly in relation to coordination between the AFP and the PNP. I, uh, this is not the first instance that we've had uh, some kind of differences of opinion exactly how to, uh, how to manage circumstances of law enforcement operations that would affect MILF communities. And for that reason, in July 2013, after a series of workshops over two months between the police officers and the Armed Forces of the Philippines, we came up with our letter directive of July 2013 that further developing the guidelines of cooperation, coordination between the AFP and the PNP, which was signed, this document was signed by no less than the PNP Chief Alan Purisima and the, then Chief uh, AFP Chief uh, Manny Bautista. And although, uh, and it was very clear that the 24-hour rule pertains to non-high value target, but in cases of non-high value target, the, the prior coordination can happen less time. So, so that Professor is the... Perno, I'm sorry to cut you. So are you saying that in your estimation, uh, the ceasefire agreements were not violated by the, by the uh, operations of SAF in the area? Categorically, are you saying they did not violate the ceasefire agreement? Uh, this is the adjug mechanism, which pertains to oh, Well, the adjug law, mechanism? Right? Yes, sir. Uh, I think they have said that they have decided as a matter of judgment call that they will not coordinate this operation with this mechanism. Kaya nga po, but for the adjug, and I'm not sure if you can speak for the... Yes, sir. Can you speak for the adjug? Protocol-wise, there was uh, oversight, uh, bypassing of the protocol. But I think, uh, if, if I may, Your Honor, this, there are really two questions here. One is pertain, how to interpret the protocol. The second is to evaluate the consequences, whether or not it was necessary or not in that circumstance. Uh, Professor, let me ask um, General Lorenze of the uh, Ajag. General Lorenze, no, just, just to um, be clear lang with what Professor Ferrer was saying. Sa inyo pong tingin, wala pong violation dun sa Ajag mechanism, dun sa ginawang... Uh, operations against Marwan? Meron po, sir. Uh, actually, sir, yung prior coordination, sir. Okay, kasi iba yung prior coordination sa time on target. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, and um, if indeed there was, you're evaluating that, ano? So kapag hinatulan po ninyo na meron ngang violation, ano po yung consequences po noon? Uh, as of now po, uh, Your Honor, uh, we really do not have any action in that maybe it could it could be uh, just by uh, talking with them or telling them that they have violated so it will not be repeated uh, anymore but kumbaga po may mekanismo tayo sa tingin nyo po nilabag yung mekanismo so ngayon both parties will have to judge no based on that um, violation kung ipagpapatuloy pa ba yung mga proseso o hindi tama po di ba yes your honor okay so let me ask uh, Mr. Iqbal uh Sa tingin niyo po ba, you, they're also part, the MILF is also part of the adjunct, tama po? Okay. Do you feel oh, that there was a violation in the in the adjunct, in your estimation, na meron pong violation yung uh, usapin ng ceasefire? Well, uh, you know, I do not want to say it, but it was already admitted that there was no coordination. Okay. Uh, kung baga, nasabi niyo na rin, ho, no? nasabi niyo na rin, no? na wala pong coordination, therefore na-violate yung adjag. Ano po yung magiging aksyon ng MILF ngayon ng uh, nasabi po ninyo na meron pong violasyon dun sa makamekanismo ng pagsisease fire? Uh, nun din mismo titingnan dun sa terms of reference ng adjag at saka yung sa ceasefire agreement. May mekanismo doon na nag-address kung sakali may violation on, part, on the part of government, on the part of the MILF. Yun din mismo ang ma-address. At doon, doon sa violation na yun, titignan po ninyo kung nararapat o bang ipagpatuloy yung peace process o hindi. I think that would not go to that extent because everybody believes that the way forward is to continue the peace process. Okay. So, so you're saying, uh, Chairman uh, Iqbal, na kahit may violation, ipagpapatuloy pa rin ninyo yung peace talks? Well, the part of the MILF, we are committed to, uh, to peace. And uh, for us, there is no other option except the option of peace. Okay. Sabi, nyo po, sabi po ninyo no, that... Um, there is no other option except peace. I would like to ask regarding justice, no? 
At uh, ito rin po yung tanong ko nung isang araw and I'm very masaya po ako na nandito po kayo para sagutin yung mga tanong ng diretsahan. Uh, kahapon po, si General Espina gave a very um, impassioned and emotional um, plea, no? plea and a question regarding why his men were treated that way. No? Uh, General Espina, no? yesterday in Congress, and I think that, um, uh, that uh, went to the hearts of many Filipinos. Uh, I'm sure nakita nyo na rin po yung mga video, meron po kayong mga reports on the ground. Handa po ba ang MILF na tumulong sa ating uh, mga government officials na arestuhin, mag-serve ng warrant of arrest kapag panahon na mag-serve ng warrant of arrest at i-turn over ang mga gumawa po ng mga heinous crimes sa ating mga SAF 44? Handa po ba kayong tumulong? Uh, mahirap na tanong yan, pero kaya lang ang gusto kong sabihin dito, yung justice. Opo. Eh, kailangan mag-apply yan doon sa two sides. <coughs> Big sabihin, <coughs> ang hostisya, hindi lang para sa malakas. Ang, ang pinaka-importante yung hostisya para sa yung mahina. So, uh, uh, justice would apply to West. However, regarding your question, I, I think we have a mechanism to, to, to address that question. It's in, in the mechanism of the ceasefire agreement and the adjunct. The MILA from the beginning, in 1997 up to today, we considered all signed documents as sacred. Even that agreement is signed between Muslims and non-Muslims because it is the same. Whether you sign an agreement with a Muslim or with a non-Muslim, the sacredness of that uh, uh, agreement is the same. First of all, no, Mr. Iqbal, no, yung malakas at mahina in this case, uh, maybe traditionally malakas yung gobyerno at mahina po yung mga kasama ho natin sa MILF. Pero in this case, klarong-klaro po, di hamak mas marami po yung uh, ibang forces. No? At uh, kung makikita rin po ninyo, mas maliit rin yung puwersa na pumasok po sa mamasapano compared to the forces that were there. Uh, yung nakita ho natin... Kahapon, no, yung nag-surface po ng mga videos at yung medical legal report na meron pong mga pinatay ng harap-harapan. Yun po, uh, labag rin po yun sa mga patakaran po ng MILF. Hindi po ba? Your yes. Honor, would you uh, allow me to read a portion of uh, the, conduct, the, the Code of Conduct of the Bang Samoro Islamic Armed Forces? Okay, please, please. Yeah, yeah. It's Article 1, uh, Items 4, 5, 6, and 7. Ar uh, number, number 4, Wounded Enemy Combatants. Never betray or be treacherous or vindictive do not mutilate, don't cut or burn palm trees or fruitful trees or ruin dwellings. Don't slay sheep, a cow, camel, or other animals except for food. It's a hadith from Prophet Muhammad. Number five, surrender enemy combatants. Maintain and observe justice at all time and avoid blind retaliation. Protect and treat them humanly. It's in the Quran. Number six, prisoners of war or captives. Be kind at all time to captives or prisoners of war. Collect and care for wounded combatants. It's still in the Quran. Number seven, <clears throat> medical or distinctive signs. Respect personnel and facilities or persons bearing mark with signs as Red Cross or Red Crescent, including religious persons, military or civilians, carrying white flag used for negotiation, truce or surrender. You know, Your Honor, I am touched by this one. So, ang sinasabi po ninyo, yung nakita ho ng taong bayan na pagtrato sa ating SAF 44, na pagpatay sa kanila ng harap-harapan, sinasabi niyo po amin. ngayon na... Masakit sa amin yung pagkamatay ng SAF 44. At yung, kung paano po sila pinatay, yung nakita ho natin. Kaya nga ho, kailangan natin ng independent uh, investigation para makita, makita, makita natin. Ang okay. uh, uh, Madam Chairman, I'd just like to give the last word to General Espina. Um, yesterday po, meron po kayong... Uh, Meron kayong hinaing. In fact, it um, brought uh, General Napenas to tears kahit po kami. Uh, many of us were moved by that statement. At this point, and this was also my question when the last time, no? ano pa rin po yung hostisya na hinahanap po ng 
ng ating kapulisan dito po sa nangyari. Alam niyo po, katulad po nung nasabi ko noon pa, tagal ko na pong nilagay ang sarili ko doon sa paanong humahanap po nung hustisya. Doon po malalaman nyo na eh, katulad nung pamilya, ano po ba ang gusto nilang mahanap? So that uh, we'll have a good perspective po. What uh, real justice uh, are we seeking? Kaya nga ho yan, malaman ho ang katotohanan. Kung malaman po yung katotohanan through investigation, dapat pong maparusahan kung sino man mo may pagkakamali, kung sino yung pumatay, kung sino nagkamali, etc. And all others, kasi hindi na natin ma... babalik yung nagwan po ng uh, injustice. Buti ho, nandito si Chairman Iqbal at uh, at least naparating po natin sa kanila kung ano ho yung mga nangyari doon sa mga pulis namin. Eh, maraming salamat po kung uh, if uh, I may kung uh, I hope uh, Sama-sama po sana tayo. Apat na po, apat po yung aming namatay. Sabi niyo sa inyo, 18. Pero we have to uh, we have to be both together here po, no? Uh, in uh, I seek, uh, we, we seek uh, justice for our people. Yun sa inyo din naman ho. Sana maging ganun din. Salamat po. Thank you, Senator Pam. And for our next interpolator, Senator Pia Kayatan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Um, it's a, I'd like to start with a quick manifestation. As Chairman of the Committee of Women and Children, I am very much aware of the situation of civilian women and children. Just to make this clear, our concern today and in the past 15 days in the pursuit of justice does not in any way disregard the plight of the civilians and the women and children as it seems to be insinuated in many incidents just because we do not put a rubber stamp or immediately sign off on the BBL. As my colleague has said just earlier, it is our job to review the BBL. Kahit na anong bill na pumasok dito, ang tindiho ng revision na dumadan, pati ho ang RH law na pinaghirapan ko. So, sana ho maintindihan nyo rin na talagang ganyan din, dumadaan ho talaga sa butas ng karayong ang mga, mga mahihirap na batas. At kung gawin namin ang aming trabaho, hindi ibig sabihin na kinakalimutan namin ang mga karapatan ng bawat Pilipino. We are for justice and peace for every Filipino. Let me make that clear because it insults me to hear insinuations that just because we pursue this, that we are not for peace or that we are not for other members of our society. So on that note, let me address my questions to Chairman Iqbal. Um, katulad po ng sinabi ko dun sa mga naunang dumalo dito na resource persons for the past two days, maraming salamat po na pinag-abalahan nyo na dumating dito at pahalagahan ang hearing ng Senado ng Republika ng Pilipinas. Salamat po. In the last hearing, I expressed my dismay that it took the MILF 15 days to decide to return the arms and the personal belongings of the soldiers to the, to, of the SAF to their families. Tanong ko lang po, bakit ho inabot ng ganong katagal na ibalik ang government property at ang mga konting bagay-bagay na ibibigay lang naman sa isang nanay o isang asawa para maalala niya yung kanyang minahal. Alam po natin yung nangyari. Ulitin ko, tragic incident. Unfortunate incident. Uh, maraming nasawi sa party ng South. Marami rin nasawi sa amin. Kung ano mang ang nasa sa loob, damdamin ng mga pamilya na South na namamatay, ganun din po ang damdamin ng mga pamilya na mga pwersa namin na namamatay. So, because of that, we are, we, are, we are dealing with the human feelings. And human feelings cannot be addressed abruptly. We you have to understand human nature. So, kailangan po rin, eh, ano, intindihin yung, yung damdamin po ng mga pamilya nung namatayan para po 
uh, para po hindi magiging you are solving one problem and creating another problem. That's why we need really to engage with them that uh, there has to be sacrifice aside from those being killed in the name of peace kasi mas sa amin importante yung buhay nung namamatay. Pero meron itong sitwasyon, sitwasyon na dapat ipagpatuloy po natin ang kapayapaan. So yun, pinakiusapan po namin yung mga combatants namin na mayroon mas mahalaga na bagay na dapat magsakripisyo tayo. That takes it quite long for the MILF really to decide that we are returning the firearms captured from the SAP commandos. But I have to register here that not only firearms were taken by the MILF, there are groups. The BIFF has said that they captured 10. And then, gaya na nangyari sa ibang lugar, sa Sulu, sa Basilan, sa Maguindanao, Maguindanao, kung meron nangyari ganyan, yung mga sibilan mabilis din eh. So, ina-account po namin kung ano ba talaga napunta sa amin na mga armas. So, yun po ang isa sa uli po namin. Thank you, sir, for your candid response. And I, I do appreciate that there are emotions involved here. Pero yun din po ang dahilan kung bakit meron tayong mga opisyalis. Kailangan po, siguro, ito, suggestion ko din na mabilis din naman po tayong sumagot dun sa mga issue na yun. Kasi po, it is very vital to the peace process to be able to hear that you acknowledge that this is government property on the one hand and these personal belongings are part of the human rights of every person. Yun lang ang akin ding um, response dun sa candid mo naman na sagot, which I appreciate. Sana ho maisip din natin yun kasi yun ho ay nakadagdag sa sakit at sa hirap na dinadanas natin ngayon na hindi masagot yun ng ganong katagal po na panahon. Especially with incidents that sumagot ang uh, ang mga combatants doon sa mga asawa ng SAF at kung ano-ano hong pinagsasabi. Sana maganda hong narinig sa officials on your part na gagawin namin ang lahat para maibigay kaagad yun. Kasi yun naman din po ang sinasabi nyo. That is your objective. Kailangan nyo lang idaan sa proseso. Anyway, let me move on to my next point. Um, narinig nyo po yung sinabi ni Secretary Dilima about the applicability of criminal laws. And uh, when you were asked just earlier by Senator Pam if you will coordinate with government agencies in the investigation and in the surrender of these uh, um, persons, ang sagot nyo po eh, mahirap na tanong yan, dapat both sides magkaroon ng justice. I agree, tama naman po na, mahirap, na both sides must have justice. Pero sabi din po kasi ninyo, kay Senator Alan kanina, nung referring to the video, kung yung bang mga nakita natin doon, in our own personal capacities, at it has not been presented uh, in the Senate, eh, ano bang description nyo doon? At yung mga gumawa ho noon, eh, isusurrender ba? Ang sagot nyo po is, malala pa sa terorismo yon. I remember that, and therefore, uh, I, I'm a little bit confused now with the answer kay Senator Baum and kay Senator Allen, kasi ang intindi ko is, kung sino ang responsible sa mga ganong acts, eh, you will coordinate with government to identify these these persons and surrender their persons. Can we just get clarity, sir, on that answer? Well, uh, narinig natin yung explanation ni Secretary Dilema na meron mga karumadumal na uh, aktibidad na labag yan sa international law. So, in matters of uh, principle, dahil pag-application ng yung batas na yan, na ay hindi lang mag-apply yan halimbawa sa MILF, pati sa gobyerno ng Pilipinas. So, ibig sabihin, kung yung, yung war crime na yan halimbawa, ay mapapatunayan after a, a credit, a, a, a duly, uh, yung fair and uh, impartial investigation na mayroong gumawa noon halimbawa uh, sa MILF o di kaya anong grupo, Uh, siguro, uh, uh, the, not just the MILF, even the government of the Philippines is uh, bound by uh, the rule of that uh, international law. So in matters of principle, pag mapatunayan yung ganon, na talaga may garoon, may, war may war crime, siguro that would apply. Okay, thank you. E, just for the record, it's also part of domestic law kasi na-adapt po yung provisions na yun sa um, Republic Act po natin. Um, moving forward, well, the reason I ask that is because I guess in principle, sinasabi nyo it will be done, pero yung concern ko is kung sa gamit nga lang po, nahirapan tayong isurrender, 
lalo po yung sa tao. So I'm just making known that concern that I have. Um, follow up po to sa tanong ni Senator Alan naman na sinabi niya, paano po kung matatalo ang MILF sa parliamentary election, titigil na ba kayo? Ang sabi po ninyo, uh, eh wala na kaming armas, eh nadikomisyon na, eh di wala na. Eh ang aking lang namang uh, i- na is sabihin ngayon is may balita po kasi na may foreign funders. Hindi ko pwedeng itago yon dahil marami hong nakakarinig ng ganon. So, concern ko yun na kung ang sasagot din ni the Commission, there's also that concern that if there's a will, there's a way and the, the news that there are foreign funders out there. So, that is a concern that I also have. Ano, ano ho ang pinupunduhan? Kasi sa ngayon, dami-daming foreign funders na tumutulong dito po, sa peace process. Ang armas po, katulad po nung pinakita niya na 750,000 to 1 million. Yun nga ho, sabi ko kanina, ano pa pang saysay na mag, uh, kukuha pa ng armas ng MILF, eh, ang pinag-usapan dito, ay eh, pag na-complete na yung proseso, eh, magdidecommission ng MILF. That, 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 that is what we would like to happen. Um, another, question, another question po follow-up kay Senator Gingona naman, sabi niya, um, sabi niyo po sa kanya, eh, wala hong lugar na may complete authority ang MILF. And what you want to happen under the BBL is to have legal authority. And then you added po, kung mananalo yung MILF sa parliament, mas masusupuan ang karahasan. Ang tanong ko po is, under the BBL, may police force. Kung sa ngayon po, may sariling police force ang BBL. Kung sa ngayon po, hindi naman natin nakita, at least in this particular incident, na nag-aaway ang MILF and Bangsamoro. In fact, they seem to be living fairly peacefully in Mama Sapano. Um... Bakit pa ho kailangan ng separate? Kasi this incident brings to our attention the possible conflict that, that can happen if there is a separate um, Bangsamoro police. That, that has been the discussion <coughs> in many venues. Actually, there is no separate uh, Bangsamoro police. The Bangsamoro police is part of yes. the Philippine National I, Police. I do know that, sir. It is yeah, in yeah. Section 2. It is identified. Yeah. Pero meron pa rin. Bakit ho? Unlike in other areas, there is no such entity na Bangsamoro Police. Bakit pa ho na kailangan ng ganun? Oh. Oh, mer meron daw, meron daw ano, ang arm for, ano, dito naman si Governor Hataman, may police na naman sa arm eh. Actually, may pro ARMRD, arm talaga, pero ang reporting niya not to the regional governor, but to the GPN pa rin. So, if, if I may get clarity from um, General Espina, if, so what we have now is one whole unit. Is there any such such um, entity that similar to what will be created under the Bangsamoro? Does that exist in any way right now, uh, General Espina or Secretary Mar? And any concerns that you have on that? And I think that's my last question. Ma'am, the uh, police force that's uh, going to be set up in in the Bangsamoro would be under the GPNP and under the supervision of Napolco. Resolved na po yan. Yes, I know. Pero does that, does that kind of setup exist now in no. any other no, way? So that's why we are creating something new. Yes. And why is that necessary? That is my question. Bakit kailangan may Bangsamoro Police? Wala namang Cordillera Police. Wala namang Isaya Police. Yun, yung, yun lang po yung gusto ko maintindihan. Kasi this incident has brought to our attention na yung possible conflict na mangyayari. Eh kung wala namang internal problems between BI and MI na, bakit may kailangan na bang sumoro polis? Ba't hindi pwedeng PNP na lang? Uh, Ma'am, it's uh, more on the regional uh, police office that we are referring to here. Yung uh, pro-arm namin is also a regional uh, police, which is a unit of the Philippine National Police. Itong... Itong uh, Bangsamoro Police would a, be a regional police unit of the PNP. Just like any other regional police unit yes, all over the country? Yes, ma'am. Any, any further comments, Secretary Mar, on that? I don't know if you can explain it better to me because you're a civilian like us. Uh, th thank you, Bono. <clears throat> uh, the present PRO, but by the way, PRO is a police regional office. Present PRO arm, in fact, becomes or converts into the PRO Bangsamoro. Uh, the 
So it's not like we're creating a new entity. Uh, basically, it's the entity that is there that will now be uh, sort of renamed to reflect the name of the new uh, of the new area. Or police has to be composed of Bangsamoro people. Hindi naman. Well, okay. not necessarily, but Secretary that is. Secretary uh, Delis is shaking her head. No. But that is uh, also our policy all over the country. Because uh, in Cordillera, the PRO Cordillera and all of the provincial uh, offices of the PNP in Cordillera are the, Cordill the people from Cordillera, the people from Region 1, the people from Region 2 are uh, pretty much those that occupy those positions in, in their respective areas. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman Iqbal. Thank you, Senator Pia. He, he, we were discussing about uh, the possibility of reinforcing them, but it is already being done by the 6th Infantry Division. So he did not give you any instructions as to what to do? Uh, the guidance is to reinforce or rescue the group. So my you know, guidance to my division commander is to do, do his best effort. Well, the, the guidance, what do you mean by guidance? This came from the president. This came from your superior commander. Who, what guidance uh, was that? We, we were in a briefing room, Your Honor. It, the presence of the president, the chief of staff, the what SND. What were the instructions to you or any of the officers uh, by the president upon him finding out that there was a firefight and we were suffering heavy casualties in that briefing? In that briefing, Your Honor, at about 1700, uh, I was discussing about the 84th SAC. So this is the main effort that we found out later on. So the guidance is ensure that there is no friendly fires because we are doing a link-up operations. So Meaning, the instructions to you were to ensure no friendly fire. There were no instructions as to the extrication, exfiltration of our... We are already doing that, Your Honor. Okay. All right. So uh, again, so there were no instructions specific to, uh, to you by the President after your briefing. Apparently not. General Pangilinan, uh, you said that uh, you were following doctrine, which is well understood. Uh, kaya nyo hindi, uh, hindi kayo nagpaputok ng fire mission uh, dahil nga hindi maliwanag ang uh, locations ng mga puwersa. Information to the President. No, sir. So what we are, what I'm trying to find out, General Purisima, did you at any point, uh, when you heard that uh, because at 5.30, you were already, 5.30 a.m., you were already requesting uh, uh, assistance from the AFP. Did you at that point also inform the president, I am, I am requesting assistance from the AFP because yung mga tropa ko ay napasabak at uh, mukhang uh, uh, marami na tayong casualty? Your Honor, that is the essence of my request earlier that uh, to clear with the... Uh, the uh... So, uh, at, at this public hearing today, we are being told that we do not know or we cannot be told when the president was first informed about the firefight uh, the, between the MILF, BIFF, and the PNP staff. Your Honor, that's why I'm requesting because uh, it, it involves the communication uh, between me and the, uh, and the President, Your Honor. Who had, uh, who did, when did the President know that Marwan had been killed? Ano yung report sa inyo, Adjanal Napenas? Bingo, Mike Wan? Ang, uh, communication uh, it's Mike one bingo sir. okay there but Mike one bingo when was that uh, information relayed to the president after you received that uh, that uh, information uh, general Napenas, what did you do with it what did you do with that information I informed the uh, OIC PNP through a text message and I also informed general Purisima through a text message you know. uh, did uh, general Spin I think, uh, Senator Marcos, will you allow a brief statement from them or would you like to take your time now for interpolation? I, 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 uh, I would uh, allow the uh, Secretary perhaps after the questioning because this is uh, just continuing my former line of questioning when I ran out of time uh, yesterday. So, Go ahead, uh, Senator. Uh, thank will, you, of course, thank you, Senator Marcos. Secretary and and my, to... my intervention will be very short. Uh, I just want to refer to... I, I'm uh, sorry, Secretary Deras. Let, let me just make this clear. Would you allow her to... Well, no, I would rather finish mine because uh, baka abutan tayo ng 2.30 na hindi pa natapos yung aking uh, tatanong. Uh, so, with the 
Uh, but afterwards, I think we will, <laughs> if, if I get lucky. Uh, we, uh, so let me continue with the line of questioning that I had started yesterday. Uh, General Napenas, during the January 9 meeting with uh, General Purisima, Men with Mendez Purisima and the President, hinanap ba ang, ng Pangulo si General Espina? No, Your Honor. Hindi niya sinabi, nasan si DDG? No, Your Honor. No. General Purisima, did the President look for General, uh, General Purisima, did the President look for General Espina in your January 9 meeting in the palace? No, Your Honor. No, so he, he was not surprised and he was, uh, uh, he, was, he, it was uh, uh, he was not surprised that he was not there and he went on with the meeting despite the fact that the acting Chief PNP was not there. Uh, we have uh, heard the testimony today uh, from the different officers. General Katapang, at no point did you inform the did you forward that information to anyone, to your to, to General Purisima or to the President or to SILG? Sir, about marijuana, I'm not so sure. Uh, ang nakalagay kasi doon HBT, so it's just ordinary. Pero na ng 530. Ang naging instinct ko sir, tumawag kay General Guerrero, tulungan sila. Yung encounter na kikilangan nila ng tulong, alalay. Pero Marwan, I'm, trying, I'm still trying to... Okay, para if you could get that information oh, for sir. us. Please. General Guerrero, did you inform the President at any point that the, uh, the firefight, there was a firefight and we were beginning to suffer heavy casualties? Madam Chair, Your Honor, I was told to brief on the situation in Central Mindanao at around 1700 or 5 p.m., Your Honor. So at that briefing, the President was present? Ye yes, sir. So the, your briefing was about the firefight of the PNP staff in Mama Sapano uh, against the BIFF and MIL. Yes, Your Honor, that, that is based on the information that I'm getting from my division commander. It's very uh, vague. It's that's not complete. Okay. Uh, We're just trying to update him on what we learned about the incident uh, from my division commander, Your Honor. Did the President issue any instructions having found out that there was a firefight going on? Uh, at that time, we were already discussing the uh, condition of or the state of the 84th SAC. What, was the, what were the instructions of the President to you upon finding out that we are beginning to suffer heavy cash? President, that there was a, uh, a firefight going on where uh, we, were, we were suffering uh, casualties, uh, that PMP SAC was suffering casualties. No, Your Honor, but in the afternoon, it became very clear that indeed we had suffered uh, How very How did it become clear, General? Uh, when uh, General Guerrero already informed that there were already casualties in the field. So it was General Guerrero who, he, who informed the President? Uh, when he was uh, talked to. He... Yes, but that, so it was the first person to inform the President that there, were, there was a firefight, there was an encounter, and we are beginning to suffer heavy casualties. The first time was told was uh, was uh, General Guerrero informing the president. Uh, is that correct? Uh, we are not uh, we are not yet confirmed on how many casualties we have. I know, but uh, the, the the point I'm trying to uh, the uh, the question I'd like answered is who was the first person to inform the president that there is a firefight in Mas Mama Sapano and it has gone wrong. Uh, there's an operation. It has gone wrong, and we are beginning to suffer heavy casualties. Who? informed the president of that first uh, your honor i do not know may i ask okay. my field commanders if they can be allowed to well answer? no the field commanders were only reporting to you and you were next to the president so i presume you would be the closest one uh, from the from the uh, side of the pnp uh, i know that it's secretary mark would not have been the one because he was he did not know of the operation general spina uh, did you at any point uh, transmit this uh,